नमस्कार वेलकम टू माय थर्ड ट्यूटोरियल ऑन दिस ई लर्निंग सीरीज ऑन कंप्यूटेशनल मटेरियल साइंस एंड टुडे वी विल अंडरस्टैंड हाउ द क्वांटम एस्प्रेसो इनपुट फाइल वर्क्स सो इन द लास्ट ट्यूटोरियल आई शोड यू हाउ टू इंस्टॉल क्वांटम एस्प्रेसो एंड टुडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू रन योर फर्स्ट कैलकुलेशन ऑन लिनक्स सिस्टम फॉर ए एस्प्रेसो इनपुट फाइल दैट यू क्रिएट योर so uh, once you have installed quantum espresso you will get a number of uh, interesting modules uh, with that so there are different executables as um, i had shown you uh, previously so you have this uh, pw.x this is uh, uh, the executable for the pwscf program and what it does uh, is you can do with this quite a few different things Uh, most prominent among them are the structure optimization with the relax or variable cell relaxation also you can do the self consistent calculation once you are satisfied with the structure now this is most important because uh, if you want to do any kind of uh, analysis any kind of uh, further calculations like band structure density of states or uh, find out any parameters from your materials uh, modeling simulations so first with quantum espresso you have to do the self consistent calculation and everything comes after that uh, so once you have optimized your structure it is uh, either through uh, relaxation or uh, the variable cell relaxation and uh, then you are satisfied with it uh, so then you have to first carry out the self consistent calculation and that will give you a number of uh, output files uh, in the written in the way uh, quantum espresso gives its outputs uh, in the internal file structure uh, that is not really uh, readable uh, easily but with post processing tools pp.x you can uh, get various uh, data uh so an scf calculation can provide you with many things total energy forces stress it will uh, contain information uh, about charges magnetism spin eigen value states uh, orbit spin orbit coupling and many things and uh, then you can uh, go on to do post processing with this executable pp.x and this will give you uh, cube files and data files for Uh, electron density total potential local density of electronic entropy stm images electron localization so many things are there charge density difference uh, l dos integrated l dos spin polarization and uh, so on and uh, on top of this scf calculation you can run other calculations once this has converged uh, bands dot x and dos dot x for the density of states and Uh, this one is for the band structure so there are different modules further uh, if you want optical properties from the output of the scf calculation you can apply this uh, post processing tool epsilon.x to get optical spectra dielectric function theoretical uh, els jdos and such things apart from that uh, quantum espresso also has other features like the nas elastic band calculations which gets you the activation energies uh, along the reaction path pathways to find the saddle points uh, then you can do phonon calculations of various uh, to get the various parameters associated with the phonon structure of the system so uh, there are even uh, more uh, possible uh, options uh, more executables are there but uh, right now i am going to discuss only uh, some of them uh, because uh, as we go uh, further in the tutorial series uh, we will discuss uh, different uh, modules and what different kind of calculation like uh, scf uh, scf calculations uh, optimizations uh, then post processing tools dos band structure neb phonon on all these uh, things we will be doing and more so uh, let's today we will mostly focus on the scf uh calculation that is the self consistent uh calculations 
and uh, the input file uh, in general for any quantum espresso uh, program uh, input is file name dot in so file name will be the uh, you can put your uh, uh, name of choice uh, for the file name and dot in is the extension uh, this uh, is common for all the espresso files and uh, it is a system of cards and flags so uh, there are segments of the input file which are known as cards and under those cards there are different flags so uh, syntax is uh, you start with an and and put the card name and then you have uh, the flags and each card uh, has some certain specific flags uh, that it uses and that you can uh, find um, in the user's manual in a very uh, big detail but I will also go on explaining uh, the ones you will be most uh, most likely to be applying so uh, and remember once uh, you have opened a card you need to close it with this for most of the cases for some cases there are ex exceptions for some cards I will also talk about them later so we will uh, first try with an example of a typical input file for SCF calculation of uh, monolayer MOS2 so uh, first uh, the input file starts with the control card so this flag basically specifies uh, how the calculation uh, parameters it sets up the type of calculation you are going to be doing so uh, here we have selected uh, the SCF the self consistent calculation so the, this is the calculation card and this has to be set to SCF out directory this is uh, specifying the output directory where results are to be written uh, if it is omitted then uh, it is set to the default uh, directory current directory where you have your input file prefix is something that uh, all the input out output files uh, the espresso program will create so it can uh, store each of the corresponding different stages of the calculation density wave function and other uh, informations and uh, they, it would be uh, putting them in a format like pwscf.wf1 for wave function 1 and so on like that so this kind of uh, you can just specify the prefix of the uh, file input output names this is very important the pseudo did so this is uh, pointing to the directory where the pseudo potential uh, the pp files uh, in short uh, they are going to be stored and uh, it has a default value um, in the uh, quantum espresso system so the environment variable you can uh, change it to some other variable you like or uh, it is default uh, most of the times it is set to home espresso so you can also delete uh, these uh, two cards out there and pseudo did if you are going to put uh, uh, your input file respectively in the uh, di directory where you are going to uh, where you want the results to be and um, also uh, if you are putting your uh, pp files in the default directory then you may not use this card you don't need to uh, verbosity is like how in detail uh, the output log file would be uh, that you can set low or high high verbosity uh, would uh, give you more uh, information and also increase the size of the output log file a uh, lot more text and uh, low verbosity will give you uh, lesser information on the output there are very important uh, flags there additional um, uh, additionally you can use these flags the wf collect to collect the wave function at each um, for, from each processor so it collects all the wave functions and stores them uh, you need these for some calculations like charge density difference and others uh, TPR for this is for uh, calculating the forces uh, sometimes you want to see uh, what are the forces uh, acting on your atoms T stress it shows the stress so some flags uh, as I said the, there can be these flags can take numerical values some flags take strings uh, some flags take logical true or false uh, type so mind the syntax dot true dot or dot false dot like that and all the lines you uh, end with a comma so this is uh, the delimiter 
so next we come to the system card so this is the control card and this is a different card system card so after control uh, we will come to this section this, that is the system card and there uh, first you see that uh, the card is open with an system and there is the close so uh, you have this ibrav so this is basically specifying the bravais lattice of the system uh, if you have uh, free cell uh, not any particular uh, type of uh, uh, not any particular type of uh, specific bravais lattice in case uh, say you have a super cell uh, so or a unit cell so then you can use zero uh, otherwise uh, for simple cubic you use one for body center two for face center three and like that uh, here we are doing hexagonal mos two so we have set it to four and um, this works both for hexagonal and trigonal uh, p and uh, many different type of uh, uh, bravais lattices all the 14 you can specify and the list is uh, uh, also available uh, online so you can uh, google the different type of uh, bravais lattice it can take for the system uh, in the pw.x input then comes the cell dimensions so this is a hexagonal so it will take uh, a and c so this is cell dm1 cell dm3 uh, a and c uh, these are specified in terms of uh, the dimensions of the cell uh, thereafter you have the number of atoms because there are uh, uh, three atoms in the MOS2 unit cell so you have only this uh, N83 N type two different type of atoms MOS2 has MO and S so N type will be two if it is graphene so only one uh, type of atom is there carbon so it will be one E cut WFC this is a wave function cutoff energy in Rydberg and E cut rho is the density uh, cutoff energy also in Rydberg and uh, the rule of thumb is to have this uh, E cut rho four times uh, that of E cut WFC input DFT now this is very important uh, that there are several DFT methods uh, implemented within uh, Espresso so you have LDA, PZ which are uh, basically more or less the same then you have PBE, BLYP and uh, many other methods and uh, the whole list of methods you can find in this uh, URL this link then there is something called uh, occupations so it uh, prevent uh, discontinuity in electron distribution in metallic atoms when you are uh, carrying out the calculations and that is why you use this uh, kind of a smearing and uh, this smearing can be different types like Marjorie Vanderbilt uh, given by MV or Fermi Dirac given by FD so these are the flags you have to be um, setting you have to edit the input files and input file you can create in any text editor in Linux or if you are more comfortable doing it uh, with uh, Windows and then copying it to Linux then you can use gedit or any other text editor uh, DGOS uh, is a value this is the full width of maxima of the smearing so this ends the system flag then you will have uh, and electrons so this is the electrons flag and here you uh, put uh, certain things uh, to control the diagonalization algorithm so uh, default diagonalization algorithm is the Davidson so uh, here I have not put any uh, cards, uh, any flags here so it will use the default so if some flag is omitted then it takes the default values uh, otherwise you can specify the value you choose uh, accordingly and uh, this is convergence threshold is uh, for self consistency uh, because if you are running a SCF loop uh, how accurate the calculation is will depend on this convergence threshold and you can set it to a different value uh, mixing beta is uh, as we uh, do different SCF steps uh, the calculation uh, proceeds to uh, mix uh, the older density with new density so this uh, 0.7 implies 70% new and 30% of old density for each subsequent SCF calculation 
and then comes the uh, description of the atomic species uh, the, and the positions and the k points. So, uh, notable thing here is that uh, these uh, three cards you don't really need to begin with and and close with uh, this uh, slash uh, and this is how the format of the input file is. So, atomic species, atomic positions and k points. Uh, so, in under the atomic species you will list the elements that are present, their atomic weights and the pseudo potential file. So, you have to put the exact name, I have just given an example name, uh, you have to put the exam exact name of the PP file and uh, this should also be consistent with the input DFT because uh, input DFT is the uh, DFT method you are going to use and if your pseudo potential is not generated with the same method, you will get a wrong result. And uh, where to get PPs, uh, we will show you. Uh, basically, uh, we have to download the pseudo potentials from uh, the Quantum Espresso website. These are free, and uh, put them in the specified uh, pseudo potential directories. So, uh, when we do the hands-on uh, uh, hands-on tutorial in the next uh, upcoming video lecture, we will uh, show you exactly how to do that. Now, important is the Monkhorst pack K grid under the K point flag and uh, you can set it for automatic meshing. This is uh, most standard and we will uh, discuss other methods also. So, these what are these numbers? Basically, this is NX, NY, NZ and this is basically the displacement. So, usually you don't need displacement uh, from the origin. Uh, so, you, it can be set to 0, 0, 0 but uh, when you are setting the K point in the XYZ these uh, directions, uh, it is important, uh, mind it, it is, it is in the gamma uh, reciprocal lattice space. So, for the bulk, say for example, uh, you will use a n by n by n. So, all these values will be a certain value, say for example, 4 by 4 by 4. It is a three dimensional system. If it is a three dimensional system, then you use this kind of a k point setting. Uh, it can be 666 6, 6 or uh, 999. Nine, nine, uh, it depends on the convergence, it should be tested for convergence, but if you have a 2D system, there is no repetition in the Z direction, then you will choose uh, like 441 uh, or 661 or something like that, uh, because uh, the Z direction, you don't have a uh, periodicity, right? Uh, it is a 2D material and for a 1D material, say, uh, for example, only in X direction you have periodicity, then you will have uh, 4, 1, 1 like that. If it is like uh, periodic in only in the z direction, it would be 1, 1, 4 for a 1D material and so on. So, now if we just take a look at the um, uh, input file we will be using in our next tutorial uh, for the espresso calculation. So, I have different blocks, this and control, the calculation type is set to SCF, prefix is PWSCF, verbosity is low and uh, I have turned on these flags for writing the forces and stress uh, because I might want to see the forces and stress and uh, this is uh, for 2D MOS2 uh, we will be using the PB exchange correlation wave function cutoff will be 50 Rydberg and density cutoff 200 Rydberg so I have set this e, uh, this E cut WFC50 and E cut row 200 Input DFT, PBE, because I am going to use a PBE calculation. Occupations, uh, I will use smearing. I will using, I'll be using the FD smearing and degauss of 0.05. And the electrons uh, uh, card, uh, I have this convergence threshold 1D uh, minus 07. So, uh, 10 to the power minus uh, 7 read box. Mixing beta is 0.7 atomic species and this is uh, the atomic weight and this is my uh, name of the pseudo potential file that I'll, I will download and store it in the uh, default location uh, because I am using the default location uh, see I have not used the uh, pseudo potential directory uh, card or uh, I am using uh, not using the output directory card because I will place my input file where I want the output files to be not a different directory. So, I have the information for molybdenum and its uh, PP file for sulfur and its associated PP file, 
then there is the atomic positions in the crystal coordinates and these are fractional coordinates so if uh, the length or height or uh, width of the cell is uh, considered as one on that scale it is at these kind of fractional coordinates so this is just uh, describing the structure of your system and then the k points because I have a two dimensional system I will be using a six six one uh, k points non course pack k grid and uh, no displacement so I just set this to zero 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 uh, we will show uh, in the next tutorial how to run this calculation so uh, firstly you will have to have uh, this input file all these cards and uh, this goes down to this so from and control to this k points all the thing in one uh, file so uh, we will name it uh, mos to scf and uh, in a directory where you want to run the calculations uh, we will put this in file uh, copy the pp files downloaded uh, to the default pseudo potential directory uh, by pp i mean the pseudo potential and we can also specify if you uh, like to a different directory uh, we will open the terminal in Linux and put this command so this will calculate and store the output log file in the same folder uh, and alternatively I, I don't recommend uh, because if uh, say for example uh, you have a large calculation uh, it will take a lot of time uh, but some people uh, want to see the output real time so you can uh, use this kind of a command t output with this pipe uh, so then it will store the output uh, log in a file called just output but uh, also at the time it will show you uh, on screen uh, the how the calculation is progressing for small calculations it's okay for, but for large calculations I would not recommend it so uh, that's it for today and uh, many thanks for uh, being with me and you can visit my website site and uh, if you like these tutorials please support that channel your support is important and uh, like share and subscribe thank you very much and uh, see you again soon take care bye bye